Now I'm going to show you how you numerically solve this problem using Python. Now here I've got a Python editing window. I'm using the InThought canopy that was used in the labs. So it should be familiar to many of you, but you can use the Python editing environment of your choice. Or indeed you can use another programming language. The syntax will be very similar. So let's create a new file. Now we're going to have to tell Python where we're going to start. So we're going to start at time zero. We're going to start at position equals 100 meters, the height of our skyscraper. And we're going to start with a velocity of 0, 0.0, which is assuming that the uh, base jumper just steps off and doesn't kick themselves down or upwards. We're also going to have to tell it our time step. I'm going to call the time step dt. Now you can call these anything you like. Uh, it doesn't matter what the variable names are. This is what I've chosen. But as long as you're consistent, instead of calling it velocity, you could call it uh, puppy poo poo or something if you want. But you don't have to type it all the time and people will be a bit baffled at your code. OK, so now we have to set up a loop. So I'm going to put a comment in, set up a loop. A loop is a bit of Python code that will repeat over and over again. This is what's going to calculate each of the different steps for us. And we're going to use a while command. A while command will keep doing something over and over again until some condition is met. So we're going to have while. What I'm going to do is pick x greater than 0 colon. And that means everything after that line in the loop will be done repeatedly until x is less no longer greater than zero, i.e. when you hit the ground. Now everything that we want to happen over and over again, everything inside the loop must be indented. The canopy editor does this automatically, it's put in a empty spaces there, so everything that's this far in, we know it's inside the loop. Okay, so what do we need to do? So we've now started, we're starting at uh, time t equals zero, x 100 meters v equals zero, and now we need to go one step forward. So take the starting values and turning them into the values at the end of the loop. Now we worked out the equations for this. We worked out that the acceleration, I'm going to call it A, is equal to 0 0.007 times velocity squared. I'm just going to do V times V minus G, 9.8. Okay, so that should calculate the acceleration. Now let's calculate the change in position, dx. We worked out the equation for that is equal to v times dt plus a times dt squared. This is the benefit of Python over Excel. It's much easier to see what you're typing. It's much clearer and more readable. Now we have the change in velocity, dv, which was just a times dt. Right, so we've now worked out the three things we need to work out. What we now need to do is update the variables that tell us the position, velocity, and time. So what we're going to say is t, we use a plus equals command, which means a new value of t is going to be the old value of t plus whatever's on the side of the equation. In this case, that's just going to be dt. We're now going to change x. So we're going to do x plus equals dx and v plus equals dv. So what this means is up here we've defined the variable. So t is a space somewhere in the memory of the computer and we've put the number 0 in that. When it gets to this line here, all these lines here are going to be done over and over again. It's going to find the value in there and it's going to add dt to it. So dt should be 0.1. So t will now be 0.1. Then the next time it goes to the loop, it'll change it to 0.2 and 0.3. Likewise, each time it goes to the loop, it'll add dx to x. So x will be constantly updated. And finally, let's plot the print it all out so we can see what we've got. Let's print on no t x, v. I'm going to save that. Give it a name. And 
and I'm going to run it. There you go, did it all. So you can see 0.1 second, the height was 99.902 meters. At 0.2 seconds, it dropped to 99.70. The speed has increased to minus 1.95 meters per second, and so on and so forth until at time five, it had dropped below ground, so it hit the ground somewhere between 4.9 and 5 seconds. And at this point, this loop here said, oh, x is no longer greater than zero, so we should stop. And so five seconds, that actually pretty much agrees with what Excel told us. So this seems to be working. Now, those columns of numbers are not so much fun. Let's actually try and plot it. Enthought Canopy has built into it the matplotlib plotting library, which again is something we used in first semester. So I'm going to import that, import PyLab, and I'm going to set up a couple of lists, one of which is going to be what I plot on the x-axis, so I'm going to call it xList, and yList. At the moment those are empty lists. What I'm going to do is instead of printing out Everything. I'm going to save them to the list. So what I might do is I might, let's say we want to plot the x-axis as time and the y-axis as x. A bit confusing, y-axis as x, but live with it. So xList.append, I'm going to put in t, and yList.append, I'm going to put in x. What does that mean? What that means is it takes the value of t at this particular moment and adds it onto the end of x. And then it takes the value of x and adds it onto the end of y list. If we run that now, so I'm going to save it and now run it. Nothing's printed out, but we can now come down here and just type x list and see what it looks like. And you see it's the list of all the x values, which was all the time values in this case. And similarly for y list. So that seems to be working. Anyway, now loop has gone through, calculated all these values and stored them in the list, and we have to plot it. If we put a plot command here, indented still, it'll plot it every time it goes around the loop, which is tedious. We only want to plot it once when the loop is finished. So let's go hit delete to go back so we're not indented anymore. That means we're not part of the loop. And what we're going to do here is pylab.plot. We're going to plot x list against the y list. And we're going to set up some symbols. I'm going to pick dash g. The dash means it'll plot a line. G means it'll be green. And then we need the pylab.show command to actually make it come out on our screen. So save that and run it. And we get a plot of height against time, showing it hitting the ground after about five seconds which seems to work very well. We could then, instead of plotting height against time, we could plot velocity. So what we'll do is in the Y list, we'll now append the velocities rather than the times. So now this list will be slowly built up with pairs of times and velocities rather than times and positions. Save and run. And we now get a plot of velocity versus time. So it starts off falling fast, but then starts plateauing out, but it hasn't really reached the terminal velocity by the time we hit the ground. Or we can put the acceleration in here. Put A in there, save and run. And now we get a graph acceleration starting off as minus 9.8 G, climbing up and then starting to plateau out as it gets towards terminal velocity. But in this case, it hits the ground first. If we make the skyscraper taller, so let's say we make it 300 meters tall. Now, if we run it, we can really see we're getting close to the terminal velocity. So that's how you do this in Python.